reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory be to you o lord chapter 2 verses 41 to 52 each year his parents went to jerusalem for the feast of passover and when he was 12 years old they went up according to festival custom after they had completed its days as they were returning the boy jesus remained behind in jerusalem but his parents did not know it thinking that he was in the caravan they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances but not finding him they returned to jerusalem to look for him after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers when his parents saw him they they were astonished and his mother said to him son why have you done this to us your father and i have been looking for you with great anxiety and he said to them why were you looking for me did you not know that i must be in my father's house but they did not understand what he said to them he went down with them and came to nazareth and was obedient to them and his mother kept all these things in her heart and jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before god and man the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ please be seated hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers the gospel today is very special and therefore it has a special message to every one of us joseph mary and jesus the holy family of nazareth they went up to jerusalem for the feast together with all the neighbors we are told as a caravan after the feast they returned and everyone would be together in the caravan after one day's journey joseph and mary were looking for jesus and jesus was not with them what a great anxiety for mother mary for joseph the son of god and trusted to them now found missing they came in terrible anxiety and fear walking 3 days and that's when they found him in the temple sitting with the scribes and learned men listening to them and asking questions and mother mary asked jesus my son why did you do this to us we were searching for you with great anxiety and the answer of jesus is very significant why why did you look for me you should have known i must be in my father's 
house. My dear sisters and brothers, what did Jesus mean by this question to his mother? Why did he look for me? You should have known I must be in my father's house. To understand that question, we must understand the custom of the Jews. For the Jews, the children, as they grow up, they go to the school to learn the scriptures and Jewish traditions. They study till the age of 12. According to the Jewish understanding, a boy gets mature in learning at the age of 12. At the age of 12, the boy must be in his father's house. And that means the boy must take up the profession of the father. Till the age of 12, he studies, he's trained. At the age of 12, he takes up the father's profession. So, Jesus must have taken up the profession of Joseph? No. No. Jesus was not the son of Joseph. Jesus was the son of the heavenly father. It's the heavenly father who had sent him to the world. And Jesus knew this clearly. That his commitment is to the will of the heavenly father. Remember when Jesus took flesh and came down to the world, he said, behold, I come to do your will. That's what, that's what Jesus came for, to do the will of the Heavenly Father. And at the age of 12, Jesus manifested to everyone that his profession is of the Heavenly Father. He must be in the Heavenly Father's house in Jerusalem. He cannot be confined to a carpenter's shop. He revealed his heavenly identity, that he was God's son. As the son of God, he must be in the father's, in God's house. And thus, he revealed his godly, his heavenly identity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, our first commitment is to God. Of course, we have our parents. We have our circumstances of life. But ultimately, you and I must be committed to God. To do God's will, that's what we are sent to the world for. And always, we must be searching for the will of God. What is God's will for me? Everything else is secondary. In prayer, that's what I must be searching for. What does God want me to do? And only when I obey the will of God, only when I carry out God's word in this life, only then I will be a happy person. Only then my life will be fulfilled. My first commitment is to my God. The Holy Family of Nazareth is very special. Everyone in that family, Jesus, the Son of God, Mary, the mother, Joseph, the foster father, everyone had a very special mission on this earth and everyone was told of that mission and they knew as a family they were 
put together by God himself. It's God who sent Jesus, the Son of God, to the world as the son of Mary. And Mary was chosen as the mother of the Son of God. Mary did not understand, and yet she accepted. She accepted God's word. If that is what God wants me to do, I am ready and willing. And the Gospels tell us, Mary did not understand everything well. How could she? She was a very human person. She could not understand the mysteries of God's kingdom. Even when she could not understand, she accepted God's will. And she was ready to take the risk of it. Indeed, Mother Mary took a great risk. She was betrothed to Joseph. And that's when she got the message that she would conceive and bear a son. And that could have been death for her because soon she would be found with child and Joseph does not know about it. And therefore, Joseph had the obligation to reveal it. Mary was pregnant without his knowledge and Mary would be stoned to death. That was what could happen to Mary. And Mary knew this. And yet, beyond all human calculation, Mary surrendered. Here am I, your handmaid. Let it be done to me according to your word. Mary surrendered her life in the hands of God. Let everything happen to me according to God's will, that God's will be done in my life. And at every moment, what Mary did was God's own will. And that's why Elizabeth said of Mary, Blessed are you. Blessed are you because you believed. A woman who believed. What is belief? Belief is obedience. Belief is surrender. She surrendered. She trusted in God. God was the focus of her life. Nothing else mattered. God and God alone. And that total self-surrender made her truly the mother of the Son of God. And that was the greatness of Mary. And Joseph, Joseph was indeed a great man. More than a human person. There was something great in Joseph. Joseph, in the Gospels, he does not say a word. No, he's always waiting for the word, the word of God. He does not give any opinion of himself. He did not give any preference to God. No preference for him. His preference is God's own will. Always ready to obey God's will. He wanted to marry Mary and live a happy family life. That's when he realized he could not marry Mary because Mary was pregnant and that was clear to him. So he decided not to marry Mary, to abandon her, to abandon her and go away. If he lives in Nazareth, he would have to declare that Mary was pregnant without his consent and he did not want to destroy Mary so he decided to abandon Mary let her live I go he wanted to go away and that's when the message came 
accept Mary, accept Mary, and take her to your house. But then, when Joseph was asked to accept Mary, not as his wife, the justifiable privileges of marriage were denied to him. He was asked to accept Mary as the mother of the Son of God. And Joseph accepted that will of God, always ready in silence to accept God's will. And Joseph, there's something great about him. He's the one. He's the one man whom God trusted. God trusted with his own son. He's the only one, the one man whom God trusted with the mother, virgin mother of the Son of God. That's the greatness of Joseph. Always committed to Jesus and Mary because of God's will. You know, this family, this holy family is so sacred, our relationship that they had with each other. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, we shall know this, your family. Your family is God's own creation. And the word of God is very clear, very clear that it is God who brought you together. You became a wife. You became a husband because God wanted you to be a wife. God wanted you to be a husband. And God sends children to you, every child. Every child born to you is God's own gift, God's own initiative. All that you did was to prepare a body for your children. God infuses the soul. There's something beautiful about this. When God wants to send a child into this world, God does not, God does not drop the children from the sky. No, God chooses a man and woman, a man and woman in love to send his children to the world. And you were chosen by God. You were chosen by God and you were trusted with your children, but your children are God's own children. You are trusted with God's own children, and the one commitment we have in our family is to God. God, you are given a wife. Accept your wife from the hands of God. You're given a husband. Accept your husband from the hands of God. You are given children. Accept your children from the hands of God. And you shall know this. You are put together by God himself. And therefore, every time there's a problem, and problems are bound to be there. Every time there's a rejection, and rejections are bound to be there. Every time there's a failure, there's a mistake, you need to turn to God. Because your family, your family is united by God himself. And Jesus said it so clearly, so clearly in Matthew chapter 19. The Pharisees asked Jesus, about his idea of marriage and family life. And Jesus explained, Jesus explained that from the beginning, God has created man and woman together. And what God is united, no man shall put a sender. But then the Pharisees asked a question, if that is what you think is marriage, why did Moses give us the license to separate? And Jesus said, Moses gave you the license 
to separate it is not god's will now it is not god's will it is because of your hardness of heart that moses allowed you to separate allowed you divorce that's not god's will later in the house the disciples asked for an explanation from jesus master if that is what you think of marriage is marriage possible is marriage possible two people always together always one with each other always in love is that possible now this is a question you could have asked often is it possible to understand my wife now is it possible to live with my husband now my wife is fallen sick my husband is angry all the time and is it possible to live with him to live with her is it possible a question you could have asked in your family life and jesus answers that question jesus said no it is not possible for man or for woman it is not possible to be together always marriage is not humanly possible jesus said it so so clearly marriage is not humanly possible the relationship of marriage is not possible in the human way but immediately jesus added marriage is possible for those to whom grace is given from above what is grace given from above whenever jesus spoke of grace given from above jesus always meant the holy spirit when the holy spirit is given to you it is then that the holy spirit will enable you enable you to be together marriage is a relationship enabled by god and that's why the famous american preacher bishop fulton j shin said it takes three to be married husband wife plus god the holy spirit and therefore your marriage will be a success when god is there in your midst when you are focused on god joseph mary and jesus they were focused on god god was the one presence that held the three together and so your marriage your family god's presence god's constant presence will hold your marriage relationship together because as human beings we are bound to hurt each other as human beings we are bound to fail each other as human beings a wife is bound to misunderstand the husband as human beings a husband is bound to neglect the wife as human beings parents could misunderstand the children this is possible and that happens all the time but it is here that we must remember the holy family as the holy family was put together by god god's presence kept the holy family together your family will be kept together by god himself and therefore every time there is a sickness every time there is a misunderstanding every time there is a problem you must come together in the presence of god there's a moment you should know the promise when jesus says it's the holy spirit who will keep you together when jesus said it it is said as a promise the holy spirit will be given to you will be given to you whenever you ask for the holy spirit and that's why we call marriage a sacrament what is a sacrament a sacrament is a human action in which god is present and god is acting and your marriage is a sacrament not only at the first moment of your marriage of course at the first moment of your marriage 
the Holy Spirit descended into your relationship and united the two of you together. But the Holy Spirit remains in your relationship at every moment. And very especially in the moments of distress, in the moments of failures, in the moments when everything seems to be going wrong, the Holy Spirit is always present. And therefore, when there's a failure, when there's a misunderstanding, what you must be doing is not to fight, to fight it out. No, it's not to argue with each other. No, when there's a problem and failure and misunderstanding, what you must be doing is to come together in prayer and claim the promise of oh God. We are not able to understand each other. We are not able to make it together. Oh God, you have promised. You have promised to be with us. And Lord, we need your presence. We need your power in order to understand each other. There's something beautiful in the first miracle of Jesus. The first miracle of Jesus was the miracle at Cana. At Cana, wine jars were becoming empty. And nobody knew where to turn to because it would be considered a bad omen if wine runs short. That's exactly what was happening. That's when Mother Mary intervened. Mother Mary intervened and Jesus did the miracle and the new wine. The new wine began to flow. And when the new wine that came with the miracle of Jesus, Jesus turning water to wine. When the head waiter tasted the new wine, the head waiter made a comment, a very significant comment, that the new wine was better than the old wine. The new wine given by Jesus was better than the old wine. The wine at Cana is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. There was a problem, there was a failure, but the Mary brought it to Jesus, and Jesus did the miracle. When Jesus intervened, and the new wine was given, it was a wine of a superior quality. The Gospel tells us, wine, better wine than the old wine. We know old wine is better than the new wine at Cana. The new wine was of a superior quality. That's exactly what you will experience in your, in your marriage relationship. There's a misunderstanding, there's a problem, there's a failure, there's a sickness. You came together in the presence of God, you offered it to the Lord, and the Lord does the miracle of giving you the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes in, you experience a new joy of the Holy Spirit, a new peace of the Holy Spirit, a new love of the Holy Spirit, a new gentleness of the Holy Spirit. The new wine is of a superior quality. And therefore, every problem, every problem in your marriage, every failure in your relationship, every situation that source in your relationship, in your life together, should lead you to prayer, waiting for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will descend and make your marriage a relationship of a superior quality, God descending, heaven descending, and making your relationship heavenly as it was the relationship of the Holy Family in Nazareth, and that's the message God wants to give you. Be committed to God. Of course you look at each other, you love each other, but in that love, in that love, experience the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Your marriage, your family life will be a life of joy. Always the fullness of joy descending into your marriage and thus we need to bear witness to the activity of the Holy Spirit 
in our family life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Amen.